calling all barrier breakers, status quo smashers, world changers. You're not just driven, you're data driven. You know that traditional business is history and that data centric organizations decide the future. You have the vision and guts to make digital transformation happen. You understand that data is the lifeblood of your business and that it becomes more powerful when you tear down walls and unify data across silos and clouds. You aim to push customer touch points to the farthest reaches, inspire global teams to innovate and discover opportunity wherever it exists. There's one company who can help you make it all possible. NetApp has a whole new approach to data so you can align your resources, unleash your data's full potential and realize your vision. Data visionaries wanted. You know, life used to be so simple. I remember when there were three television channels. Coffee came with cream or without. Your choice in sneakers was black or white, and high top or low top. And there were just two trusted sources of news, the daily newspaper and the evening nightly news. And Insight was held in a decommissioned lab in Sunnyvale called the Fortress of Solitude. And for NetApp, our competitive world was something we called the two-horse race. Now there are 3,000 channels on television and still nothing to watch. Coffee is a venti, pumpkin, spiced macchiato with um, almond milk and agave. Your sneakers, you can have them custom made. They're pink and purple with your own monogram delivered to you overnight. And uh, trusted sources of news are hard to find. It's hard to know who to trust and what you can believe. And Insight is in Berlin with thousands of partners and customers. And the two horse race is more like the running of the bulls in Pamplona. Life is no longer simple. Now, of course, you could come up with ways of simplifying your personal life. You know, the only person you have to consult with is yourself, or in my case, my wife. But really, that's not how it is in business, especially in IT. I can remember when a customer meeting was also very simple and straightforward. You'd often go up to the office and it would say something like storage engineering. And the meeting went something like this. It'd walk in, the customer would say, hi, Joel. I'd say, hi, Hans. I'd say, Hans, we have a new box. It does this better than that, and it only costs a million Deutschmarks. And Hans would say, I'll take 10. I'd say, thank you. And that was it. One box, one decision maker, not a lot of choices about how to move forward. Life used to be so simple. Does it sound familiar? Now it's like this. There are many more choices about how to solve business problems, many more opportunities to use technology to transform the business, and that is fantastic. But there are also a lot more decision makers with a lot less money and a lot less time. And there's a lot more data being used to drive those decisions. And that data is all over the place. So three years ago, NetApp realized that life was no longer simple and that we needed to transform the company. And that meant a lot of changes. And what we see is a lot more today is a lot more exciting, and there's a lot more potential to make a difference in the world. So the biggest challenge is also the biggest opportunity. It's the increasing importance of data in business. And that data is more dy distributed, 
dynamic, and diverse than ever. But businesses that thrive in the future are the ones who figure out how to unleash the power of data for competitive advantage. We introduced the data fabric three years ago to simplify the data management on premises and in the cloud. Since then, we've been integrating the portfolio with data fabric capabilities that provide data access and control, data visibility and insights, and data protection and security. And more recently, we've introduced several new data services and applications to make gaining insights from that data even simpler. Today, NetApp is about data. So for this week to be valuable to you, insight has to transform too. If we do our job here, you'll leave with insight about our products the same way you always have. But you also will leave with insight about how to help your company transform, and maybe even how to transform your own job. It's that simple. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what's going on in your jobs. We culled through a bunch of our data to see what we could learn about that. We looked at the active IQ data that's coming in from 300,000 active NetApp data fabric endpoints every day. 36 billion data points come in from our entire portfolio across 118 countries every day. And what we wanted to see what we could find out about what you all are doing in your jobs and in your companies. And here's what we found. You're transforming IT in three big ways. And it turns out that most of you are doing all three at the same time in different parts of your companies. We see you embracing cloud, an incredible innovation that improves the competitiveness. It allows you to be, more, more fast, to be faster and more competitive, and to focus more on the core business and less on operating infrastructure. We see new applications and new users who want an easy, one-click experience, the same type of experience they get from online shopping. Simplicity, speed, and scale. And who are building next-generation cloud infrastructure for new data services to achieve it. We see you modernizing, getting ready for cloud, optimizing operations, and looking to gain efficiencies and accelerate performance by refreshing with Flash. So what does this look like in the real world? You're dealing with these challenges and opportunities every day. So we want to hear directly from you, or at least some people who look a lot like you, who have similar challenges. We use the data we collected to create representative users who are faced with the same challenges and opportunities that you are. We're going to start with James. At Capital X, which is a large multinational financial services company, he's been asked with modernizing and optimizing his data center operations. Over to you, James. Thanks, Joel. OK, so look, I recently met with my CIO. She wants efficiency, speed, and real-time analytics. Problem is, I'm not sure she knows the state of our data center. It's old, siloed, and ineffective. I don't even know what's in it. We need to focus on deploying applications instead of storage, ensuring each application has the right service levels. At the same time, we're at capacity, and it's getting harder to get budget. Oh. And she wants to know our data strategy. Yeah, data. I mean, we have so much customer data we could use to innovate, but now it's scattered. I might not be able to centralize all of it, but I at least need a common data management platform for wherever my data lives. And even with that, it's going to be difficult to extract the value from all that data. We've started new programs. One develops state-of-the-art real-time fraud detection, the other a neural network to power high-frequency trading, innovative stuff. But the demands from our DevOps teams for real-time analytics to power all this are crazy. 
I'd barely started getting Flash deployed, and they already want new stuff like NVMe and storage class memory. The MongoDB guys keep mumbling about microseconds. It's insane. In the meantime, I need to keep the business running. I can't start over. I have to modernize and optimize my operations based on where I am today. So I need to rethink our data center, centralize and deploy applications, not storage, improve efficiency, and, well, stop spending so much on new gear. And as if that wasn't enough, I need to meet insane new performance requirements for real-time analytics. Do all that and we stop fraud and become the envy of the financial world with our new trading platform. Joel, can NetApp help me out here? James definitely has his hands full. Fortunately, I know some guys who have the answers. To help James modernize and optimize, I'd like to bring up the NetApp Senior Vice President of the ONTAP Software and Systems Group, Octavian Tanase. Thanks, Joel. So I was listening to uh, James and I got this distinct feeling that he's uh, actually overwhelmed. Now, he's not alone. Every day I speak to customers that have applications that underperform, data in silos, and frankly, an inability to anticipate and react in a timely fashion to the demands of the business. Now, he doesn't know that and he feels alone. And sometimes I feel that way. And when I do, what I need is a plan. You know what? NetApp will build a plan for CapitalX and James to see if we can help him with his business. So what has happened in, uh, with CapitalX in, in general with the financial technology industry? Technology, changes in the demographic, the, the demands of a competitive environment that they're operating in has upended that business. And Capital X is desperate to simplify and remove that complexity. Now, the fastest path to solve that problem is through modernization and using data management to modernize storage. So what has happened? Now, not long ago, the way we'd interact with that bank would be in a brick and mortar environment and there was a personal touch. We would meet somebody, conduct a transaction and in a very short period of time, massive amount of change has impacted that, that business. And what happened is we traded that personal touch to the touch screen and the way we, uh, we interact with the capital X and businesses such as this is through an application, application that actually runs on, uh, on our phone or, or tablet. Now, modernization means transformation of your IT. And NetApp has thought about that and has identified, as Joel mentioned earlier, three imperatives that are helping customers take advantage of the digital transformation to compete. You know, harnessing the cloud, future-proofing your investments and building the next generation data center, and modernization of storage through data management. Now, I'm excited about that because this is something that uh, you know, Dave Hitz and NetApp have done for the last 25 years. Time and again, we help custom customers and enterprises you know, transform, modernize. So what do I mean by a modern data center? What are the characteristics of that? First and foremost, it's flash enabled. It's cloud connected, it's software defined, it's simple, it's efficient, and it's, it lends itself to be uh, managed by a, a, an IT generalist because many of you no longer have the ability to attract, to employ the Jedi Knights of uh, networking and storage, the people that really knew how everything worked, right? So all the vendors that are building solutions for IT need to democratize and simplify the approach to doing the data management. So let's see if we can apply these, these characteristics in solving the, the problems that Capital X and James have. So we put together a plan, and like any plan that it's worth anything, you have to start with an assessment. You need to know where you are. You're also gonna have to do some simplification and consolidate your, your applications into one simple data management focused on, app, you know, on, on an application-centric approach. Now, we also heard that James is in trouble with, uh, with his CIO and what we're gonna do, we're gonna help him stay employed and we're gonna focus on, on accelerating the main trading application. 
He also has a data explosion challenge, and we're, we're going to look to solve that for him, not only today, but for long term, and we're going to give him some flexibility in the way he uses his budget. Last but not least, we're going to make James a hero at Capital X, and we're going to help him build the type of infrastructure and data management solution that stands the test of time and enables his you know, company to, to succeed and compete in the 21st century. Now, to illustrate this, to bring this to life, I'm going to ask Jeff Baxter, Chief uh, Evangelist for ONTAP, to come and join me and do some demonstrations. Jeff. Well, thank you, Octavian, and thanks again, everyone, for joining us this morning. You know, when I heard what James was talking about when I saw that, I had the same sort of sense. I mean, it's not a pretty picture. We think, we're not entirely sure. We think that might be the other side of James. Um, we've sent in forensic scientists to try and find out, but it's just not looking good, right? James is buried under an aging, siloed, inefficient infrastructure, and we need to help him get a handle on it. So fortunately, we have the absolute best tool in the industry to do that. How many of you out there have heard of or are using On Command Insight? Let me get a show of hands out there. All right. So really good show of hands out there, people familiar with OnCommand Insight. It's the industry-leading tool to help people assess across a heterogeneous data center, across the data fabric, and see what's going on, servers, compute, networking, storage. And it can go down all the way to the individual details, or we can go all the way up to maybe a CIO-level dashboard, where we can actually see at a very high level what's going on. So let's take a look at what Capital X's infrastructure looks like. That's it's not so good. Let's say latency over five milliseconds, capacity firmly redlined at 95%. Everyone loves running their storage at 95%, right? Yeah. Uh, not too good on the apps. I mean, what do you think about how CapEx is doing, Octavian? Well, it is quite clear why the CIO is not happy with, with, with James. I bet that there, there's another dial that actually shows the gauge pointing to him getting fired. <laughs> actually, we call that the HR dial. It's in beta. Um, so let's see. Well, you're do yeah, it's not, not looking good. That's in beta right now, not currently shipping. But well, let's uh, see if we can prevent that. Absolutely. So we can help. Fortunately, we have a tool to help provide common data management. How many of you right now have infrastructure powered by ONTAP? Let me get a show of hands out there. Just a okay. sea of hands out there, right? It's the industry's leading enterprise data management software. And Octavian, your team actually took the next big step with ONTAP just last week. Oh. Yes, indeed. So happy to announce, uh, starting last Thursday, we announced the latest iteration of ONTAP Innovation. ONTAP 9.3, it's available for download. More secure, efficient, performant than ever before. If you're running a SAN in, in a SAN environment, you should expect about 40% improvement in, in those applications. Um, if you're looking for storage efficiency, 20 to 30% for most of the workloads. We're also enhancing security with multi-factor authentication. We also made it simpler. It's an application-centric approach to data management. Um, you can manage encryption keys through a KMIP server. And um, you know, it's, uh, it's you know, the leading operating system that I, I hope you're, you will all you know, go and, uh, and upgrade. Actually, I was looking at some statistics uh, the other day, and we already have a few uh, dozen systems reporting uh, active IQ or, or phone home. And you know what? Most of them actually are here from, from Germany and, and Denmark. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate that. So, you know, we could spend a lot of time talking about ONTAP 9.3, but I'd encourage you to go check it out in Insight Central and the breakout sessions for the remainder of this week. There's a lot more detail on the innovation there. But, you know, one of the things that James is facing as a challenge is even if he's standardizing on a common data management platform, the data itself is no longer central. The idea of having a single data center or even, you know, two data centers where we pull all the data in is just not fitting of today's world, right? Data is distributed. It's diverse. It's everywhere across the infrastructure. Fortunately, we can apply that same common data management anywhere and everywhere. So whether it's in engineered systems, engineered storage arrays, whether it's running in converged systems with things like FlexPod, whether it's on heterogeneous third-party storage or software-defined storage on commodity gear, running in the cloud or, in the, or near the cloud, ONTAP is there. So regardless of where your data is, regardless of where James and Capital X have their data, we can apply that same common data management platform. And you know, looking at this, it strikes me, being here in Berlin, here in EMEA, right, a couple of the things we worked on here have really been inspired 
here in EMEA. And I think you know what I'm talking about. One of these looks a little off to me. Something looks off about that icon. Well, I think you're, you're looking at, um, at a server there, and you're thinking that that should be a metro cluster type of a design? It is Germany, so I think it should be. What do you guys think? It should be a metro cluster, right? Yeah. That's just pure pandering to the audience, by the way. Yeah. But so in 9.3, there's actually a new evolution for metro cluster, actually. Well, I couldn't be happier to announce the next iteration of the metro cluster innovation here in Germany. Why? Because this is the place of birth for the, of the metro cluster solution you know, for more than 12 years right now. So what we've done in 9.3 is democratize DR. How? Through IP networks. Why? Because IP is ubiquitous in your data center. And we're looking to also do you know, something more. We're looking to lower the cost of the solution, not only initially, but throughout the, the lifetime of the, of the solution. So, I couldn't be happier to be able to share that with you today here in Germany where this was born. Absolutely. So thank you for that. And if you want to learn more about Metro Cluster IP, again, Inside Central breakout sessions going on throughout the week, sharing that information, that knowledge. And there was one other new item. So when we talk about converged systems, we've had a tremendous partnership, a continuing partnership with Cisco on FlexPod, right? It's been a great source of pride for both of us, great solutions for customers, and that's going to continue. But our customers believe in choices, we believe in choices, and especially here in EMEA, there's been another partner that's been incredibly strong on that front. And just last week, we were incredibly happy to announce NFlex. So NFlex is a new converged infrastructure, part of a partnership between NetApp and Fujitsu. So NFlex is powered by the innovation, the joint innovation of Fujitsu and NetApp. It's fully factory configured to run from day one. It's co-engineered by NetApp and Fujitsu for constant global availability. And it uses best-in-class Fujitsu and NetApp components that you can order all the way from configs from small to extra large. Would you say that it would be powered by ONTAP? It absolutely is powered by right. ONTAP. I'm glad that you mentioned that. <laughs> so. Definitely, again, I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but all of these things we're talking about, you should definitely check out an Inside Central, NFlex, and the breakouts as well. And that kind of wraps up, you know, really these key things that we're delivering in the portfolio that were inspired and born right here. All right, but this is all about James and Capital X and how we can solve his, you know, problems. Okay. So let's go focus on that. Okay, so back to his challenge. So he's standardized on ONTAP, but if you recall, he told us specifically he wants to stop focusing on deploying storage. He wants to focus on applications and their data. So we started a journey several years ago, and really now it's hit its stride in ONTAP 9.3, where we've baked all the information, all the recipes, so to speak, about these common applications directly into ONTAP, directly from the interface, so that you can focus on deploying applications, not storage. Now, that doesn't mean we've taken any of the power away. What, what did you call them, the Jedi Knights of Storage? Yeah. I think, how many Jedi Knights of Storage do we have out there? Raise your lightsabers. OK, very cool. We should have kept the lighted drumsticks for lightsabers. I think that would have worked well. But for more and more, we're seeing IT generalists where you probably don't want to read a 100-page technical report. If you do, I recommend TR1234, Cure for Jet Lag. It's fascinating reading. But if you don't want to do that, we've actually built that magic directly into ONTAP. All right. So if it's OK with you, can we switch to a demo and I can kind of show off how this works? I think everybody's dying to see that. OK, let's take a look. So this right here is on-command system manager. Many of you are familiar with it. It's the GUI that we've built directly into all of the modern iterations of ONTAP. If I go ahead and log into Capital X's infrastructure here as James, you'll see this is an ONTAP 9.3 system, and it looks a little bit different than you might be familiar with. There's a new button on the left called Applications. And if I click in there and select between the different applications and storage here, I'm going to click on Applications. What we get here is just one giant button that says Add an Application. And you know that I love big buttons. So thank you for that. Just going to leave that right here. So um, yes, we put a big button in just for you. So if we go ahead and click on Add an Application, what you're going to see is two different types of applications, right? General NAS, General SAN. And if we click in on SAN, this is how simple we're making it. One screen where we ask you sort of common sense questions. What's the name of my application? In this case, we're going to use James's trading app. How much storage space do I need? And this is a little bit new. What service level do I want? So service levels, there are three different service levels now built into ONTAP. You can add your own. But when I select the right service level that I've defined, scroll down to the bottom, click a button that says Add Application, 
And ONTAP already knows everything about that application, knows what service level you've asked for. It goes out and finds the right node, the right type of media, and applies the right QoS policies and deploys it for you, just like that. I call that ONTAP magic. It is. It's absolutely ONTAP magic. And the cool part about the magic is you can still see behind the scenes if you want to. Right? So you can click in. You can see all the individual details. I can go up there and click on the individual underlying volume. And if I do that, I can get real-time information about the performance and how well it's corresponding to that service level I requested. So if you remember, James was sitting on his high-speed trading application over five milliseconds of latency. By moving to ONTAP 9 AFF, done just a little bit better now with 0.4 milliseconds of latency. Well, Jeff, you're being, um, unlike you and being modest here, this is not a little bit. This is an you know, order of magnitude improvement in the latency. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the world's most modest person. Um, but if we go ahead and move forward here, what we can actually see is just like that, we've managed to take care of the first three items on James's punch list. We've assessed the current infrastructure. We've moved him to a, current, to a common data management platform focused on applications. And we've helped accelerate his workload analytics with a move to ONTAP 9 and AFF. Well, we saved his job, but there is more to do. I think he needs help with his data explosion challenge, with you know, his budget. What can we do there? So, Absolutely right. It's time to go ahead and get that data explosion under control. The good news is, by standardizing on ONTAP, ONTAP has that rich heritage of storage efficiency. So we routinely see customers, just by moving to modern versions of ONTAP, getting things like 4 to 1 storage efficiency and even higher. So if he's sitting at 95% full, 3.2 petabytes of data here in Capital X, just by moving over to ONTAP, we were able to save him about 4 to 1. And more importantly, with every new generation of ONTAP, you're on a six-month cadence now, there's that additional savings. You were mentioning 20 to 30% more savings just by moving. And these upgrades are non-disruptive and, and free, simple. Absolutely. So non does everyone like non-disruptive and free? We thought about disruptive and heavily expensive, but we, good choice. But just by doing that, we've got them down to just 15% full. Pretty cool. Well, it is, uh, it is amazing. The question is if we can do more, right? And uh, we shared with you in the past a, an architecture and a concept which we call the data fabric, which is the ability to do data management in an environment where some of the data lives on prem and some of the data would be in the, in the cloud. So the question is, is there an opportunity for use that, that design pattern to further reduce the TCO of James's application and, and data center? Absolutely. So we've used the magic of ONTAP, as you called it, right? There's also magic in data fabric. And a year ago on this stage, you recall, we announced something called Fabric Pool. Just six months later in ONTAP 9.2, we released it. And we're continuing to enhance it. And we're already seeing customers save up to 40% additional space using the power of the data fabric, tiering their older data, their snapshots, their backups off to the cloud, whether to on-prem private clouds powered by things like NetApp Storage Grid, or off to hyperscalers like AWS S3. And we recently pre-announced, not quite available just yet, but coming soon, the availability of Microsoft Azure Blob Storage, all in one simple, easy to use package. Well, I think Capital X will appreciate that. And I think we'll appreciate also the fact that we're giving them some flexibility. And they can, they can also manage some of this um, infrastructure through their OPEX budget, not just the CapEx. Right. Because they're probably going to send some of this data to the public cloud. Absolutely right. So it's, it's a key example of how we use Data Fabric. And we've gotten them from 95% full all the way down to 10% full in just a few simple steps. Very good. So looking back at our checklist, you know, it feels like it's flying by. but. Four out of the five items we've already taken care of. We've got that data explosion under control with the combination of the power of ONTAP and the power of the data fabric. There's just one thing left, and it starts with my favorite word, right? Future-proofing data management for the emerging applications. So if it's OK with you, I'd like to go ahead and sort of take the audience with kind of a look a little farther out into the future. Well, this is one of the, the good times to be the boss because you know, it's OK. And this is a technical conference, and I think many of the folks in the audience want to know what we're thinking and what we're going to do next. And where we're going. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me lay the groundwork a little bit. We've seen that Flash has been absolutely essential to power and accelerate the digital transformation. How many of you out there have deployed hybrid Flash systems so far? Let me get a show of hands, right? How many of you have deployed all Flash systems out there? Another huge sea of hands, right? This transformation is well underway. And it's helped us get this far, and it's still got some legs left in it. But a new generation of emerging applications are going to demand more. Things like artificial intelligence, neural networks, real-time analytics. You heard James talking about his MongoDB developers mumbling about microseconds of latency, right? Traditional solutions 
are going to, in many cases, start to fall short with emerging applications. And we're seeing newer technologies. How many of you have heard of terms out there like NVMe, NVMe over fabrics, storage class memory, server-side persistent memory? These are the next generation of technologies, disruptive technologies coming just in the next few years that are going to radically, transi tra that are going to radically transform how we approach these emerging applications. And, and I think James and CapitalX are in safe hands because this is what ONTAP has done for many years, right? right. We've helped customers adopt disruptive technologies in non-disruptive ways, and right. we're going to continue to do that. I couldn't be prouder. Absolutely right. So the cool part is we said we're going to talk about the future. One of the coolest things about the future is sometimes the future is already here, not just evenly distributed. <laughs> so if we go and look, we announced just last month the new EF570 all-flash array. It's the first NetApp NVMe over fabric uh, system. It supports 100 gig NVMe over InfiniBand, which is especially critical for some of our high performance customers. And that's not a typo, not a weird character that snuck in. It's under 80 microseconds of latency performance. Well, that, that's, that's good, but you know, I'm a little bit you know, confused here. I'm the boss. I was supposed to do the announcements here. Oh, I'm sorry. The other thing that is happening is you know, basically Jameson CapitalX have chosen ONTAP as the platform to consolidate their data ma the management. Right. And you're talking about E-Series. <laughs> can, can we get on track here? This, so this is EF. This is E-Series. Let's go ahead and talk about ONTAP. So if we look at ONTAP, let's go back into System Manager. Now, this is System Manager of the future. Right, so this is what we have running in the lab. It's not yet shipping today, but it's shipping hopefully in an ONTAP coming to you soon. And we thought about how can we add NVMe and NVMe over fabrics into here. We thought about let's create an entirely new confusing interface, but that sounded like too much work. So we said what if in the industry's number one shipping storage operating system out there, we could add redefine unified and add NAS, SAN, and NVMe over fabric all in one interface. Sound pretty good? So we're going to go ahead. It's been 10 years since we've uh, uh, you know, introduced a new protocol there. Yeah. I think iSCSI was iSCSI. Yeah, the last, last one. one. Absolutely right. So we can go ahead and click in here with NVMe over Fabric. And again, this should look very familiar. What name, right? What's the name of my application? How much space do I need? And the one thing that's changed is we added a new service level up here that says hyperperformance. And do you know why it says hyperperformance? Yeah, I do. Why is that? Because you wanted to put, gave it some crazy name, and I said no. I wanted ludicrous mode. Why couldn't I have ludicrous mode? You just had to veto it. So anyways, we ended up with hyperperformance. And hyperperformance just tells us, OK, let's do, let's do better latency than maybe we could even do before, and let's deploy it on NVMe over fabric. So we scroll down. I see the Tesla owners laughing back there, by the way. So we go ahead and we click on Add Application. And it's going to go ahead, and just like we did before, but instead of SAN, use the exact same SAN infrastructure, but deploy this just that easily on NVMe over fabrics. Pretty cool, right? Once again, on tap magic. So if I go ahead and click in here, remember we were getting five milliseconds before we got to capital X, 0.4 milliseconds of latency. And if I zoom in here on the underlying volume, one non-disruptive change, move over to NVMe over fabrics. And again, slightly modest performance. We've taken him down to 0.2 milliseconds of latency running over NVMe over fabrics. All right. So once again, you're being modest, right? It's 50% lower the latency thing. than the, in the previous deployment. Yeah, so it's, it's amazing what we're able to do with the power of ONTAP. I want to fix one more thing, though. Can I fix one more thing? OK. OK. So you know, when I look at it, that IOPS number, just not enough for me. OK. Right? So we talked about storage class memory. And storage class memory, you're going to see it's a new generation of media approaching. We're working with multiple different partners out there, things like 3D Crosspoint, ZSSD. Think of it as close to the speed of RAM, but closer to the speed of today's solid state. But at least when it starts, it's going to be pretty expensive, but incredibly high performance. So about seven, eight years ago, we had the same challenge, right? Flash had just come on the scene. We wanted to use it to accelerate hard drive workloads, but it was pretty expensive. And we came out with something. Let's see, what was it? It was Flash that we used as cache. I'm trying to remember what we called flash it. Flash cache. Oh, yeah, OK, flash cache. Absolutely right. So we thought, what if we take the exact same concept, we have this new expensive media, and apply it here. So if we go ahead and look at configuration, where we typically have had our flash cache configuration, we built an incredibly complicated interface to use this incredibly new technology. It's an on-off button. And by clicking on this on-off button to turn on storage class memory, instantaneously I'm using the value of this new disruptive technology non-disruptively and offloading 175,000 IOPS straight onto a piece of memory this size. 
Pretty cool. Good. Um, I'm happy that you're using a variety of techniques, both NVMe over fabric to lower the latency and you know storage class memory to improve the throughput. Right. So, tremendous. And we can kind of see what we're doing here. So side by side, new unified system now, 300,000 IOPS running on NVMe over fabric on the exact same equipment we started with. Well, you you double, double the throughput of the application. Awesome. Speaking of applications, you know James was talking about MongoDB, right, and how it has these new microsecond latency commands. So through the application interface that we've built into ONTAP, it's not just about generic applications. We've actually built application-specific recipes in. So if I go right back to, I'm sorry, that's now a small button, but right, you know, I hope it still works for you. I'll, I'll live. So, yeah. So if we click on that small button up there that says Add Application, you'll see down at the bottom we have specific applications in there, so various databases, and in this case, MongoDB deployed over NVMe over Fabrics in one click, one screen. And I'm happy that you chose MongoDB because it's, from what I hear, here is, particularly in Germany, it seems to be the, the number one NoSQL um, repository that is being used uh, for the yeah. data. MongoDB, tremendous, tremendous uptake in Germany, and we're happy about that, and we're building this in a lot to serve those use cases. If we click here, you'll see it looks very familiar, but with just a few changes, and those changes are because it's an application-specific recipe. So again, we ask the name, we ask the size, we ask the service level, but there's a couple changes. So right there, we'll go with extreme service level, at least on the storage array for right now, but we also ask things like replication factor, and replication factor is a MongoDB-specific term. How many replicas do you want to make of that database? And there's also this little checklist at the bottom that says, checkbox that says, integrate with server-side persistent memory, and that's new. Right? We've never really talked about the server in System Manager. Right? We've always just been focused more on the storage array side. So I want you to keep an eye on this as we move forward. Okay. So the reason we put this checkbox in here was actually an acquisition that you did a couple quarters ago, a company called PlexiStore. Indeed. So the idea was for us to um, inorganically bring some innovation in the, in the company and see if we can extend our expertise in network storage and connect that, extend that in, into the server with the idea to enable inline analytics and applications that were never you know, be, uh, possible before because of their high needs in terms of low latency and, and high throughput. So think about it. On tap, basically living in the server and having the same rich data management capabilities into the host. So is it okay if I show it off a little? Absolutely. So if we go down here, again, this should look really familiar. Go ahead and one button click, create the application, and you're sitting side by side, both generic SAN applications as well as things like MongoDB deployed directly as an application on the server. And in fact, we can actually click in and not just see the performance on the storage side, but we can actually, if you see that link up there that says MongoDB host, we can actually click there and get a view what's going on inside the MongoDB application itself on the server. Let's see it. So this is an idea of that, what that dashboard will look like. There's a couple things to point out up here. First is we are giving you specific MongoDB statistics, queries per second, transaction latency, your database size. The other thing that we're kind of hinting at and showing off here is the enterprise data integration brought to you by the data fabric. We're able to take two terabytes of that database. This persistent memory is still going to be pretty expensive to start. So we take two terabytes of that hot data, store it up in this persistent memory on the server, and put 13 terabytes tiered down to your AFF system. Pretty cool, right? Inefficient as well. Very efficient. Now you'll notice, most of you noticed, I was blanked out the performance on the PlexiStore side because you, know, you got mad at me for making an announcement before, so I wanted to let you do the performance reveal on this one. Is that OK? Ready. OK, are you ready? So let's go ahead and see what we can do there. So we have AFF and PlexiStore tied together. Let's go ahead and pull up the AFF performance. The AFF on this particular system is doing right about 300,000 IAPs. So pretty okay. good, right? Could do a little bit more, but let's go ahead and see what the PlexiStore can do. Now remember, this is a one use server, right? With just a little bit of memory, right? So don't expect too much out of it, right? So, I do expect a lot. Well, it can do almost the same performance. So it could do like 300,000 K, just, a, I mean, sorry, 500,000 K. I don't know what it's doing. So just a tiny, tiny improvement <laughs> in performance. It's, it's time for you to stop being modest. OK, I'll stop being modest. This is an order of magnitude performance improvement, all integrated, all done from one interface, all using the power of ONTAP and the data fabric to link together the newest technologies, server-side applications, new applications like MongoDB, 
and provide performance in order of magnitude faster than anything we were able to do before. Sounds Pretty cool? All right. You know, it's the other side of the equation. Should we talk about latency? Please. Right? James was talking about microseconds of latency. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, on the AFF side, we're doing about, you know, I, I laugh that this is, you know, 200 microseconds. We would have dreamed about this a little while ago, right? There's actually, I don't know if you guys can see this, there's a red bar down there, right? Down there. That's the PlexiStore latency. In fact, in order to show you the PlexiStore latency, I'm going to need to zoom in a little bit. It's going to be a very long drive. It's going to take a long time. OK, three microseconds of latency. This is amazing. So side by side. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. Order of magnitude improvement. One button click, put an application together, order of magnitude performance improvement, order of magnitude latency improvement, all tied together by the data fabric. Very good. Well, let's see back at, at our plan. How are we doing against what we promised uh, Capital X and James to do? So if we look at the checklist, that took care of the last item on the list, right? We've helped future-proof his data management for these new emerging applications. And that's great on the checklist, but I think maybe we should check back in with that OCI dashboard, if it's OK with let's you. Let's see how it looks. So a little bit of an improvement from five milliseconds of latency down to three microseconds of latency. But we also promised James to make him a hero at Capital X. You know, is there a new gauge that shows where he is today? The fire gauge? I'm not sure how often it updates, but we can, we can take a look. Let's see. It looks like it hasn't updated just yet. Oh, no, wait. Late breaking news. James has now been promoted. <laughs> so not only have we saved his job, I guess we got him an accidental promotion. That's pretty cool. Well, you know, I'm, I'm happy about that. And what we were able to do is, um, you know, implement a plan that was pretty simple. We help him assess you know, his situation. We help him simplify and consolidate with, with ONTAP. We help him you know, keep his job and accelerate his main trading application. We also help him with his data challenge. And we solve that problem not only for today, for long term, give him flexibility in the way he needs to use his budget. And, and last but not least, you know, we really went uh, all out and, and showed how some of the technologies can future proof his uh, data management for emerging applications in his environment, applications that will help his company compete in the 21st century. I couldn't be happier. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to give this back to Joel and talk about the Next Generation Data Center. Very well. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Octavian and Jeff. Thanks for helping Jeff out. So Octavian also remembers when life was simple. When he was a young boy growing up in Romania, there were only two television channels. Channel one was state propaganda. Channel two was a national security policeman telling you to turn back to channel one. So Stephanie is a colleague of James at Capital X. So she's recently moved into a new role. Let's hear from her now. I am excited to be leading development of this new suite of apps from Capital X. We are going after a new market with a new set of analytics tools. This is a great new opportunity for us. With the finance market being disrupted by new business models and challenger backs, our CEO sees that we need to be more innovative and flexible in the services we deliver and to enable more customer touch points. If we get this right, we can lead the company with a new development model. Yesterday morning, I met with the application development team about our development model. I advised them to develop independently and move fast like a startup. We have an opportunity to simplify and automate development without giving up quality. But standing up the infrastructure for all this will be challenging. We need performance, of course, but we aren't sure what the workloads are going to be. So any solution has to be flexible and it has to support all our work without compromising our projects. It has to be a simple, self-serve environment where no one has to wait for development resources. And it has to be automated so that my teams don't spend time configuring and managing infrastructure. Stated simply, it just needs to work. Ideally, with the same tool sets our developers are already using, creating new standards without slowing progress is a big mission for our CIO. 
We need to build for what we know today, but we're not sure what services will be required tomorrow. Flexibility is going to be critical. We need to be able to adjust our plans as new business opportunities arise. We need massive compute power, but not all the time. I really like the idea of serverless computing in the cloud. In fact, I would love to go all cloud for the flexibility, but some of the data is sensitive and regulations call for keeping a lot of it in the building. But on what? And how do we ensure integration with our other systems like backup and recovery and DR? The reality is we need to be up and running now and we don't have time to deal with IT. Whatever we do, we have to do quickly. My developers need to show application momentum with at least a prototype within the quarter. I need help from a vendor I can trust. So, Joel, what can NetApp do for me? So Stephanie's also taking on some big responsibilities. But finding new ways to help new customers is really exciting. I know just the person to help her. Dan Berg, the vice president of NetApp's Solid Fire Group. Dan? Let's see, I'll start with a question. How many of you like to build things? No one likes to, okay, come on. I love to build things. And essentially that's what Stephanie has asked us for, to build a next generation data center, leveraging on-prem cloud infrastructure that will accelerate our business. Let's take a look at uh, the details of what Stephanie uh, asked us for here. She asked us to get up and running quickly where time to value is critical. She asked for an infrastructure that would deliver a quick win with a very positive customer experience. She required scalability and agility in order to keep pace with the growth of her expected business. And she asked to protect her data and the business to make sure that they are both secure and be able to share across the enterprise. We have many customers like Stephanie, like you, that are investing in new shared cloud platforms to support the development of new applications and data services. You want modular, full stack solutions that deliver and simplify IT operations. And how do we know this? Well, we've been talking to a lot of you. We've been talking to customers, and those conversations have changed from the past. Previously, we used to have much more siloed conversations that involved the server or the network or storage that led to very storage-centric discussions. Today, however, we're talking more about the business and building private cloud environments. Those conversations lead us to having discussions around rapid application development, storage availability, systems availability, network efficiencies, and even security. The more we talk, the more we engage, we hear you telling us you want integrated solutions that simplify and automate and then accelerate your business. And in fact, in a recent study, we heard that over half of all IT enterprises have an IT transformation initiative of some form that with the sole goal of delivering quicker to business needs. And in order to meet this fast pace of innovation and to remain competitive, it's clear we can't continue with business as usual. We need to build a bridge from where we are today to the next level of simplicity and automation. And I believe we have the portfolio that can meet your and Stephanie's needs. Our portfolio is agile and elastic, supporting mixed, variable and on-demand workloads, allowing you to do agile planning and adapt as your business needs change. It's scalable with a scale out and software defined and managed infrastructure. You can start small, grow big, and even shrink as your needs change. It's predictable with guaranteed application performance and data assurance. You can demand and deliver quality of service down to the VM or volume level. And it's automated. With an API-driven de uh, development and management infrastructure, you can integrate, automate, and orchestrate your infrastructure to, uh, to allow you to use the tools that you choose. And with our solutions, we can deliver some real business benefits. For example, eliminating 93% of traditional storage-related performance problems and having a lower operational cost by over 67%. So let's dive into a few of the products that can address Stephanie's needs. First, the SolidFire All-Flash Array, 
at its core, a scalable, predictable, and automated all-flash array designed perfectly for converged and hyperconverged solutions. SolidFire's simple API-driven infrastructure allows you to spend 12x times less time managing the infrastructure. With guaranteed performance, automated management, and scale-in architecture, SolidFire can help you build the cloud better than anyone else out there. Storage Grid. Storage Grid brings value and flexibility to unstructured data. Using an open industry standard API and optimized integration lifecycle management, Storage Grid extends the NetApp data fabric by introducing the tightest integration with Amazon Web Services of any storage provider, period. Supporting over 100 billion objects in a distributed active active namespace, Storage Grid provides the ability to deploy as a VM in a container or as a purpose built appliance. And we also have our new FlexPod SF and NetApp HCI offerings, both based on the foundation of SolidFire technology, all integrated into the NetApp data fabric, helping you build a bridge from where you are today to where you need to be in the future, spanning from the enterprise to on-prem cloud and into the hybrid public cloud. With that, let's take a look at how we can use these products and technologies to address Stephanie's needs to quickly build out a cloud infrastructure and help her team deploy new applications. For that, let me introduce a rock star of cloud infrastructure and my colleague, Adam Carter. Adam. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan. Um, so going back to Stephanie's requirements, she's got her work cut out for her. She's got this new team, this new infrastructure, she's got to stand up right away, and she doesn't even have great clarity over her requirements. To solve that, we would recommend that she runs NetApp HCI. Essentially, a lot of compute and storage power packed into a for you starting footprint. Now, while we can start here, we can scale any direction to whatever size she needs for production someday. I'm a software guy, Adam, but that, that's pretty cool. It is. Wait, wait till you see more. Like any good HCI setup, we're going to now install that hardware through the NetApp deployment engine. This engine's design is all about taking as few inputs as possible and validating those inputs and leveraging them to automate as much as possible to make this easy. So we do have to deal with necessities like the usual EULAs here. And as soon as we can get past those, we get into the, the real meat of it. We're gonna build our own vCenter as part of this environment because Stephanie needed self-service. You could, of course, join another vCenter if you really wanted to. We're also gonna configure in one place, while this is a many layered system with lots going on inside of it, we simplified all of the authentication down to one username and password that we can input now. And then we get to automatically discover all of our inventory. So we've got a bunch of compute and storage, like we mentioned before. And generally, a new HCI deployment is gonna deploy everything. It's gonna select all of the compute, all the storage power it's got, whatever that starting footprint is, you're gonna set up from there and go. So now we're gonna deal with networking. Now this is where things would typically get really tough. Networking is tedious and error prone, especially when you're inputting just hundreds of IP addresses. We simplify that down. We don't even make you type in a subnet and get it wrong. We'll give you a dropdown of the only valid subnets available to you from what you've already defined. And we're not just going to check that these are valid IP addresses or that they're available or just ping them. We're gonna make sure DNS is DNS, NTP is NTP, that all of this is actually functioning, and by doing that, we can save you from lots of potential errors down the road during the setup. Yeah, I, I can't tell you, Adam, how many times just a simple typing mistake led to hours of debugging what it could have been that simple. Yep, and that's the job of this engine, is to make it easy. So here you can see that from very little input, we've got lots of data about the environment we've got to build. Mo most of this was just automated from that minimal input. We could customize anything we want here if we needed to, but we don't in this case. We're gonna go ahead and just let the deployment engine do its job. So here is where it does the real heavy lifting for us. This is sped up from real time. This would generally take about an hour in real life. And everything that's going on here is configuring the network, setting up all the storage clustering, setting up and installing ESXi from scratch, setting up vCenter because that was an option during it. We could be just connecting to another one. And configuring everything about that environment, plugins, whatever else needed to make it run. It does all of that for us. And just like that, we've got a complete infrastructure set up. Okay, so you got the infrastructure up and running. 
but, but now what? Where do you go from here? Well, now that we're set up, from here on out, it's all going to be managed in vCenter. Now, this is just vCenter. The great thing about this is pretty much anyone who's touched a virtualized infrastructure knows what vCenter is and is capable of managing through this environment. That means no training, no special apps they got to go learn how to run. They can just log in and get going. Now, we have extended this interface with plugins. Those plugins are already installed. I'm going to show you around a little bit. You don't have to do anything here, but this is just all the configuration data that we defined back in that deployment engine. It's available here if we needed to edit it. All the management's based in here, but we can leave all of this alone. It's been built for us into vCenter. OK, so you did that all at vCenter, but uh, where can you go from here? What else can you do in there? Well, I want to show just one example of, you know, there's lots of really rich storage features in the underlying storage system. We didn't just start coding a new storage system because we wanted an HCI platform. We were able to take a mature enterprise class system and build HCI out of it. So we have tons of advanced storage services in this. We expose those in vCenter. So just as an example here, I'm going to create a isolated VLAN on the storage system. This is a feature of the SolidFire system that was built for multi-tenancy. Let's put this developer on their own VLAN, their own storage, segmented from everybody else to keep their automation easy and keep them from running into other developers. Um, the important part to understand about this feature and many others is that they've been built right into the same interface. So we're trying to keep you as much as possible in this well-known vCenter user interface for the entire management of the system. Very cool. So what else can you do? Well. Um, they didn't know the requirements well, but I bet you they're going to need some file services in this. So we've done some neat tricks here. Um, at, as we can, as NetApp, we're going to take ONTAP Select and layer it on top of this environment. Now, I don't need more resources here. I don't need another system, any more hardware. I don't need to deploy anything. I've just got ONTAP Select now running as a VM on top of this environment. So I've built in file services, and not basic file services, world-class file services. And as you can see here, way, way past file services, frankly, we could do anything ONTAP Select wants to do on top of this system. And I can't really go into how many capabilities we're talking about that we've exposed there now as more storage services. Very cool. All right, so let's, uh, let's check back in with uh, Stephanie's list here. So you got the, uh, the HCI infrastructure up and running really quickly, provisioned. Yep. Uh, you then went on and did some VLAN work and got VLANs provisioned, set up some storage, and did that all within the same UI. And let me get this right. You not only are leveraging block storage from SolidFire, but you now have ONTAP file services all running on the same infrastructure. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Incredible. I think we uh, certainly got uh, Stephanie's first item, I, I, I hope, with all of that. Uh, so let's get on to the next item. She asked for an application to get something up and, and a quick win with a, with a great customer experience. What yep. do you got for us? Um, so I can think we can really help out there with some of that prototyping. Um, so infrastructure was just half the problem here, right? It was a big concern, but we're getting past that real quick. Um, Stephanie and team also needed to build a, a new cool application prototype by the end of the quarter is what I heard. And, and what they're looking to do there is take photos from their self-serve kiosks and analyze those with facial recognition so that they can understand how users are experiencing those kiosks. Are they frustrated? Are they happy? Et cetera. Um, so we're going to help them actually build out that prototype. And, and the way we're going to do that, just to help explain, because it's, it's a little hard to understand if you're not familiar with um, how this, this works, we're taking that initial NetApp HCI system that we just installed. That's what's pictured here. We're going to add another service on top of that. We're going to add storage grid web scale. And that's going to be a bucket for us to put all our images in, all these kiosk images coming in. Now, we don't know anything about the emotions in those images right away when we get them from the kiosks. So we're going to leverage a new integration in Storage Grid 11 that magically ties us to AWS serverless computing, lets us notify AWS automatically, and just like magic, get information about facial recognition and emotion put back onto that data for us. And we get all of that automatically. It's, it's a, uh, try to understand this picture, and then uh, let, me, let me show you a bit about how that would work. All right, I, I get it. But you spent hours coding this, right? No, no, none of this is stuff that Stephanie and team even need to code. These are built-in capabilities in NetApp products. So we've got here, this is storage grid web scale running on top of uh, HCI, like we just showed ONTAP running on top of HCI. And uh, these screens may look like uh, complex XML. It's, it's not complex. They're just configurations of how we notify AWS. This is the, the configurations that we can automatically notify. 
So here's kiosk images. We're gonna take these kiosk images, we're gonna pick them up and dump them into our bucket of object storage, and as soon as they hit the object storage, we get a notification, and that serverless computing starts doing its work, right? So I'm gonna use some data visualization software to show you here that just like that, our objects have metadata about the emotions of the people in those photos. Um, if I continue with this, that's easy to look at a kind of like an object by object basis. If, if I wanna look at that at big scale, we're gonna be talking about thousands and thousands of photos here. At big scale, I would just look at a tag cloud um, or a word cloud about what does the emotions look like in this set of data. And we can show that to you with just simple visualization software on top of that object storage. Very cool, so let me get this right. You, you leveraged cloud computing yeah. and, you, and you move the data, or where's the data sitting in this case? Uh, so, it was a requirement. We've kept all the data and updated the data with metadata all on premises. But we were able to leverage serverless computing in, in an automated fashion. So, so we've really started to leverage the hybrid capabilities of this. This is a brand new thing in storage grid 11, a um, new feature built into that system. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, so we got our quick win. Uh, certainly no coding and getting an application up and running quickly gives Stephanie what she needs. Uh, let's, uh, let's talk about what's next. I think it was scale. Yes, so using all of these storage services and, and building and actually using the system, they're gonna have to scale it. That's super simple. We've got a new storage node here that shows up as just a pending node. That's easy, we add that into the system. We're back in vCenter here managing just that part of the system. Let's add a storage node. Now this is a little good point for me to segue here. Another thing completely built into this interface is all monitoring. There's monitoring at many layers in the system. There's still remote monitoring, all kinds of things going on. But we've bubbled all of that monitoring up into vCenter so you don't have to worry about any other UI, any other management integrations. You can use them, but it's all been centralized here also. So that warning was reminding us we need to add the drives of that system too. Um, so if we just go to drives, we'll go find all the available drives. We'll add all the available drives. And as soon as we've done that, we've extended the system and made it larger in storage capacity. And adding the drives and the nodes, you didn't have to pre-configure that at all? No, this is completely automatic. That the discovery, the load balancing, everything that we're doing here, I didn't need to put any halt to the startup speed that any developers were going through to nothing disrupted this system while I went and scaled out that storage. Okay, so you added a few nodes and some drives, but uh, how far can you take this? How far can you scale it? I can take this as far as any enterprise is ever gonna need. I can go hundreds and hundreds of nodes, racks upon racks of them, all within this one interface. At rack scale, you know, I showed you that little for you unit. At rack scale, the system looks something more like this. Oh, like that? But, oh. <laughs> You mean what's underneath? Yeah, under, underneath. All right, that. can we get a little help? There it is. Ooh. <laughs> See, you thought that was pretty. That is large scale. Okay. Let's see. Impressive. We got the first three, I think. Uh, yeah. Scalability, I think the third uh, business imperative. We can check that one off the list. Uh, last thing Stephanie asked for is to protect your data, protect your business, and make that data available to the rest of the enterprise. What do you yeah. got for us? So we're gonna really help her out there too. So it's great when you can take a small division in a larger company and you can run like a startup. Uh, in some ways, you can move fast, you know, be really agile, not get uh, too hindered by other things. That's great, but you can't be an island. You do not wanna end up completely out of the corporate DR program, unprotected, et cetera. You get in a lot of issues there. So we've got to help her get into that protection of IT while not being uh, encumbered by it. Um, so this is another place where building an HCI system out of a real enterprise class system helps us out. We're gonna leverage a data fabric feature to solve that problem. For and that's SnapMirror, correct? Yes, SnapMirror. So um, a, a year ago at, at Insight, we promised we were gonna integrate SnapMirror between ONTAP and SolidFire, and we've done that. We're gonna show that to you in a second. That affects both SolidFire AFA and HCI in turn. Um, so, so let me show you how that works. Um, we're gonna go into the solid fire system here that's at the foundation of HCI. And in that system, you're gonna see that under data protection, we now have this new ca capability of adding a snap mirror endpoint, right? So in this case, um, Stephanie was given by corporate IT, like, hey, here's an endpoint we want you to do DR back to. 
And, and that's about all she needs to know is the endpoint that they want her to use. Everything else is self-service here. And this endpoint it could be a FAS, could be ONTAP Cloud, could be ONTAP Select, anything that we wanted to copy uh, back to for ONTAP. Um, so with that, we can now self-service and go to our HCI volumes, select that endpoint. There could be many. Um, we can create the destination volumes easy, even ourselves, so that's where the self-service comes in. We can select the policy, the capital X requirement that we're gonna be underneath and set it to daily. And just like that, now that we've set that, we have completely automated DR, no interruption to acting like a startup, but we're totally under the umbrella of corporate DR back to headquarters on a FAS system. Um, so what I'd wanna point out, while some small portions of this demo were sped up a bit, still in an amazingly short amount of time, We've got dev up and running, we've got them past infrastructure, we've got them prototyping, we've got them protected. We've done so much that they needed to get done and we made it look ridiculously easy. Very, think, very cool. I think by making it look that easy, we got you your last check mark, by the way. Alice Kazaknet. All right, impressive, Adam. Thank you. Um, excellent. <laughs> I think, uh, I think we met all of uh, Stephanie's requirements. Uh, would you guys agree? We got them all? All right, you'll all get a chance for yourself at Insight Central to take a look at these technologies. And uh, all I'd ask is go out there and find your own way to build your own next generation data center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan and Adam. So James and Stephanie are well on their way to achieving their goals. James needs to transform his legacy systems to optimize and modernize his data center. Stephanie needs to stand up a new business to power the new key, a new technology to, st to power the kiosk business. They're pretty different problems, but they both need a solid cloud strategy. And there's one thing they have in common, data. That's where their colleague Eric can help. Let's meet Eric. Okay. Here's the situation. Our CEO and CIO have said they want to speed up the business with a cloud-first mandate. Expectations are high. So as cloud architect, my job is to figure out what cloud-first means for us and how to implement it. For starters, it might make sense to lift and shift some of our on-prem workloads to the cloud. I need to figure out what will it take to run our enterprise workloads in the cloud. But that's not going to be nearly enough. We need to leverage the cloud to do things that would be hard on-prem. We need to own our data, but we don't want to own infrastructure. Our data scientists want to experiment with cloud analytics and machine learning, tap into the vast scale and emerging ecosystem of tools. Finally, our developers. They are all about cloud. So how can I enable our DevOps teams to work across multiple cloud environments easily and consistently? So all in all, I need to figure out how to move into the cloud, leverage the unique capabilities in the cloud, and scale up our development in the cloud. If it sounds like speeding up the business is a big job, that's only because it is. Joel, what does NetApp got for me? It's a big job indeed. But guess what? We've got Eric covered. To tell us more, please welcome Anthony Lai, the Senior Vice President of NetApp's Cloud Business Unit. Anthony. <laughs> everybody. I love Eric. You know, as a cloud person, I'm biased. I just have the best job. I get to build data services for all of our customers, and I get to build it on top of, and now inside, the biggest hyperscalers on planet Earth. You know, NetApp has been a pioneer. We've been building solutions for the hybrid cloud, and as Joel showed you, we've built an industry-leading portfolio of data services for our storage administrators, and now increasingly for cloud architects, application developers, and data scientists. Four years ago, we developed ONTAP Cloud for both Microsoft Azure and Amazon. We did that really to enable and support the migration of workloads between on-premises and the clouds. We wanted to extend 
uh, footprint. We wanted to lean into and enable the cloud for all of you. And today, all of you have cloud initiatives. Every single one of you is being tasked with integrating and connecting and platforming both existing services as well as creating new services directly on top of the hyperscalers. We've pulled together what we think is an industry-leading portfolio of services, services that help perform tasks and activities around the full life cycle of data management. And we continue to add to our portfolio through our own development and through acquisition. As an organization, we think we're the only company that really supports and enables this hybrid cloud world. Well, one of the big, big challenges that our customers have faced is the platforming of file-based workloads directly into the hyperscalers. IDC puts the NFS market at about 20, 22 exabytes, growing substantially over the next five years, both on-premise and an even faster growth rate in the cloud. So we decided that we would solve this problem. And by we, I didn't mean just us. We partnered with Microsoft. We, had, we announced back in June a joint development initiative. And then at our Insight conference in Las Vegas, we unveiled an enterprise NFS v3, v4 service built directly with Microsoft so that all of you could take advantage of all of the greatness of ONTAP, not just on premise or through a marketplace application, but as a fully embedded Azure first party service, a service that Microsoft would sell, Microsoft would support, and we would deliver. An industry first. So to help me tell that story, I'd like to introduce Tad Brockway, the head of Azure Storage. Please welcome Tad. Hey, Anthony. Hey, thank you. Hey. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. And uh, it's just excellent to be able to share with all of you more details about this partnership that we've been working on with NetApp. The, um, the opportunity here for Microsoft is to work with the leading provider of file storage uh, on-prem and then to partner with them so that all of those rich capabilities of ONTAP will be available in our cloud as a first-party service. So we'll be delivering, in partnership with NetApp, the ONTAP capability as Enterprise NFS as, uh, as if it were any other Azure service. So, Microsoft will sell, support, bill uh, for the service. Uh, it will be integrated in. The UX will be part of the Azure portal UX. The, the CLI will be part of the Azure CLI. The SDK, the, the REST interfaces, and all the APIs for ONTAP through Enterprise NFS, they'll all be integrated into the Azure platform as native services. And so, um, it's, a, it's a natural partnership for our two companies to work together, and so we're very excited to be able to deliver all this value to you. So that's, that's all of ONTAP, yeah. So that's, that's the stuff that you, know, you guys are familiar with, all of the expertise that you bring. We're bringing the industry's best service, a service that's backed by NetApp, built by NetApp, and run by NetApp. This is a service we hope will be available to all of our NetApp customers. And you know what? We really think it's a great service for all those non-NetApp customers. The power of ONTAP, <laughs> the power of ONTAP for every single person, directly in Azure. So we at NetApp have decided that to run this service 
We are building technology, we're building infrastructure ourselves to run this service. So we at NetApp are going to be the cloud storage administrators for the Microsoft service. So we are going to basically deploy and manage the clusters across now 44 Azure data centers. We're going to balance the workloads. We'll do the capacity planning. We'll manage all of the upgrades. And we'll manage and guarantee performance and availability. This is a service that anybody, a developer, a data scientist, a cloud architect, a service that's now available to every single person to extend the capability. So enough of me talking. Let's uh, show you the service. So to show that service, please welcome to the stage Joe Caradonna. Joe? <clears throat> Welcome, welcome. Thank you. You guys are about to see an industry first. Azure Enterprise NFS, powered by NetApp. But first, let's go back to Eric for a moment. So Eric is the cloud architect for Capital X, and he's got a lot of people that he needs to make happy, right? He's got his data scientists that want to use the public cloud and take advantage of elastic compute to do their analytics. He has his DevOps team that want to take advantage of the agility of the cloud so they can deploy what they want when they need it. And he has his developers. They just want streamlined workflows so they can get more done. And together, they all want to accelerate the business. So let's pull up a, uh, pull up a checklist of the things Eric needs to accomplish today. And I know it looks like a lot, but NetApp makes it simple, and I'm going to show you how. Starting with the first one, set up enterprise class storage. Now, Eric and Capital X are longtime customers of Microsoft, and Azure is their cloud of choice. So we're going to start by logging into the Azure portal. And now I'd like to bring to your attention to the NetApp NFS volumes right there on the service toolbar. Now, this isn't near the cloud. This isn't on the cloud. This is in the cloud. This is a first-party Microsoft service powered by NetApp. Now, Tad, NFS, it's right there on your front page. I'm thinking it must be pretty important to you guys. Yeah, that's absolutely right. In fact, um, the, our CEO, Satya Nadella, had said recently that uh, Microsoft loves Linux. And, uh, and as, a, as a Windows company, uh, it truly is a new world for us and, and for our customers as well. We're, we're delighted to be able to offer Linux as a first-class operating system on the Microsoft Azure Cloud platform. Uh, the, the number of users that are using Linux today on Azure is, is pretty dramatic. In fact, over one-third of all virtual machines on the Azure platform today are Linux-based VMs running a variety of distros. and that. And that percentage is growing rapidly as well. And so it's critical that for those customers in particular that we're able to support NFS v3, NFS v4, and the best in the industry uh, data management and so on features uh, that go along with that. Wow. So over 30% of the VMs running in Azure are Linux. And they need file services. So now I'm going to show you how easy it is to create an NFS volume, a NetApp NFS volume in Azure. All right, so here's our wizard. And here's where you plug in all your attributes for your volume. So we're just going to go ahead and call this volume one. And we're offering different service levels to deliver different levels of performance in terms of IOPS and latency. So we're going to run analytics on this. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the premium storage. Besides, it's NetApp. Is there really any other kind? <laughs> Choose our resource group here to associate it with. And the location in the world. We're going to go in the western US. We're going to go create our volume. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Anybody can do it. Now, storage admins, <laughs> this is your cue to update your resumes. <laughs> 
All right, so now let's take a look at the volume that we just created. Yeah, here's volume one. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And now you can see all the attributes, right? It's our premium storage level. And you can see the NFS export here, so then you can mount it to your, to your hosts. And of course, we just created this volume, so we're not using any of the storage yet. And now for data management, if you look over here under settings, you can see that you can manage your snapshots directly from the Azure portal. So this is pretty significant. I mean, we just basically took all of the value of ONTAP, optimized it on the Azure platform, and made it available as an Azure service directly in the portal. So anybody under their account can just now go straight into Azure and start building file systems, creating mount points. I don't know about you guys, but, but the power of ONTAP and the simplification of this service is, is a really, really important thing for us. And we hope a very, very significant opportunity for all of you. All of the power of ONTAP available to so many people in your organization without having to be storage experts. I, I just think this is brilliant. Yeah, make it simple. And this is what being in the cloud is all about. So now, I want to show you guys something. I'll take you under the hood of this. I'm going to jump into this Linux host here. We're going to mount that volume. I'm going to take a look at it. OK, can you see this? That's the dot snapshot directory. And anyone who knows ONTAP recognizes that signature. That's Azure NFS, powered by ONTAP, delivering the same high availability, high performance, and high durability that you've come to expect from that app. So the, um, I think it's obvious that by combining the power of ONTAP with the elasticity and the hyperscale economics of the cloud, we are going to have the best in the industry enterprise NFS solution in Microsoft Azure. And so we're super thankful for this partnership. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we started our cloud journey four plus years ago, our underlying assumption was we'd never get into the hyperscalers. But look at us now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go back to our checklist. So we did the first one. We set up enterprise class storage. Check. Next one. I want to synchronize a data set that I have in my data center into that new Azure volume that I just created in the cloud. All right, and to do that, I want to show you our new cloud portal. Here we go. Now I'm going to log in with my single sign-on. And once I'm in here, you can see all of our data fabric, cloud data services, all in one place. It's a single sign-on, easily consumable software. So our cloud portal, brand new. We're releasing it next week. You'll be able to access in one place through single sign-on all of the data services through our UI as well as through an API. Yeah. All right. So we're going to synchronize data. So to do that, we're going to use Cloud Sync. Now, I showed this to you guys last year. Remember the Mars rover and the interplanetary network? Yeah, well, as you might imagine, we've made some improvements since then. In addition to NFS and S3, we added support for SIFS, SMB, and Storage Grid as a target. And as of today, actually, we now support the Amazon EFS file system. So now, you can transport data from anywhere to anywhere using any combination of protocols. So what's important, and I hope you all take away from this, is with a first-party enterprise-grade service on Azure, tools like this create a fantastic opportunity, not just for NetApp customers to operate in a hybrid cloud world, but you know, I'm really hoping that you guys can get us operating in a hybrid cloud world with some of the non-NetApp customers. We've got a great opportunity to create a data fabric now that spans far beyond our NetApp infrastructure. And CloudSync is a capability that really gives you that connectivity directly into the Azure service. Yeah. 
So let's, let's get going with the transfer. I'm going to choose NFS as my source, and NFS is my target. And then we'll put in the host name of the, of the, of the source. Now here's all the directories available there, so I'm going to do analytics on the trading data. Okay, so I'm going to ahead and select that directory. And now we'll plug in the path to the Azure volume. All right, and now we're ready to go. So now we're synchronizing data between the data center and the cloud. This isn't just a copy, it's a synchronization. So if data should change in one place, it automatically gets reflected in the other. All right, so let's go back to our checklist here. So we did the second one. We synchronized our data set. Now, to enable those data scientists, we need to bring the data, the analytics platform online. All right, so let's go back to the Microsoft portal. And you can see, oh, we're using some of the data now of our, what is it, 100 gigabytes, we're using about 10% of that. And for analytics, we're going to use HD Insight. And HD Insight is Microsoft's Hadoop service. So you can see here that I have a cluster already all set up. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now I need a helper app, and HD Insight has its own uh, app store. So I'm just going to go into that and add an app. Oh, this is the one I'm looking for. This is the NetApp NFS connector. And what this enables me to do is connect an NFS volume to a Hadoop cluster. And we support this on-prem today with Hortonworks, as well as Hortonworks deployments in the cloud. And we're expanding it to support the native cloud analytics platforms, including EMR, Databricks, and of course, HD Insight. So Joe, I want people to understand. So we're providing the base storage service, the NFS file system on Azure. We're bringing to that snaps, clones, replications, and syncs. And then on top of that, we as teams are engineering connectors to bring that storage directly to all of the service capabilities, all of the compute capabilities that run on Azure. Our infrastructure will power HANA-based systems. Our infrastructure will power analytical-based systems like HD Insight or Databricks and Spark that's coming to Azure. There is just so many things that we are tying together and integrating and orchestrating to enable you guys to move from sort of infrastructure all the way into business outcome. Yeah, and analytics is not just for objects anymore. All right, so we installed the app, now we're gonna use it. So what we're gonna do is connect our cluster to the new Azure volume that we created and connect it, all right. Done. So we didn't have to copy, right? I mean, we didn't have to transfer that data from a file system into nope. an HDFS. It's already there. We just connected it right to the service, and now we're ready to run analytics. So why did we do all this, right? We created our volume. We populated the data set. We connected it to the Hadoop cluster. But at the end of the day, it's really about enabling those data scientists to run their analytics and derive new insights to drive the business. So all of that can be done once. Once it's done, you can establish this as a regular service. And Azure will just perform this service for you. So it's not just the functional capabilities, but it's the orchestration of those capabilities from end to end. To take data, to make it available to a hyperscaler service, and then to expose that data to, a, to business users who can derive meaningful business outcome. And once it's all set up, it runs forever. Yeah. Now, Eric has a lot of enterprise workloads with enterprise requirements. And we looked at hybrid cloud analytics here. But with Azure Enterprise NFS, he now has a wider set of workloads that he can consider for cloud deployment. So that's pretty awesome. And I have to say, it's our strong partnership with Microsoft that makes this a reality. We, we set out to do something very unique, an industry first and an industry only. We think we're bringing both new and exciting opportunities to all of our customers. You know, it, it's a very, very important relationship for us. We, we are 
committed to, to innovation and to an ongoing relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And so we're going to be entering private preview very shortly for this new Enterprise NFS service. So far, we have over 150 customers who've signed up. Uh, we encourage all of you to, uh, to participate as well. In fact, we'd love to have you involved and sign up. Uh, and you can go to, uh, of course, you can go to netapp.com uh, slash Azure Preview and get on the list so that you can be an early adopter of this service, help us refine it uh, as we go down our path to GA. And, uh, and there's even information today, you can go to Insight Central where we're at the NetApp booth. There's more, uh, more information on this service. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ted. Right. Thank you. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Anthony. Nice right. slide, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. So who'd have thought? On tap, in the hyperscalers. We got there. <laughs> so we're not done. I wanted to shift gears a little bit and show you some more innovation and show you how we at NetApp can help Eric enable his developers, his cloud architects. So Joe, let's show them some more stuff. All right, well, it only makes sense that you want to manage your data and applications together, right? So let's take the next step and set up a multi-cloud application framework. So we're going to go right back to our cloud portal here. And there's something new in here that we didn't talk about yet. The Cloud Orchestrator. Now, the Cloud Orchestrator is our new cloud management platform that we're bringing to market as a service. All right, so let me, uh, let me show it to you. So here's our dashboard. And you can monitor all your cloud resources across multiple clouds from a single pane of glass. So what are these resources? Well, one that you might expect from NetApp is you can provision NetApp NFS cloud storage directly from this orchestrator. So all of those orchestrations, all of that capability that drives ONTAP is this orchestration platform. All of the services that are going on beneath the Azure console are all orchestrations built using this NetApp technology, a technology that not only we use to build orchestrated services, but we're going to make available to all of you to orchestrate our services and third-party services. Yeah, and you can also see on, these, on the side panel over here that we've added support for Cloud Sync, ONTAP Cloud, and Cloud Control directly in Cloud Orchestrator itself. So let's show you something maybe you wouldn't expect from NetApp. Let's show them some applications. Let's do it. So this is a cloud management platform. First thing you want to do is pick the cloud that you want to run on. So we're going to go ahead and mix things up a little bit. We're going to choose Amazon. But all the workflows I'm going to show you work the same regardless of which cloud you choose, Amazon, Google, or Azure. All right, we're going to deploy a virtual machine. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, I want to deploy a web server. So I'm just going to call this Joe's web server. And I don't want to just deploy one of them. I want to deploy three. So let's just set that. Choose the region, the operating system, the size of the VM in terms of CPU, memory, performance. And that's it. Let's go create them. And you can see over here, we're spooling up our three web servers, just like that. All right, now I want to add storage to one of them. So I'm just going to pick the top one. I'm going to go to volumes over here. And I'm just going to add some more storage. And that's it. That's simple. Anybody can do this. You know, you used to have to file tickets for this wait weeks to do what I just showed you in like three clicks. So that's virtual machines. Now let's talk about containers. Our cloud orchestrator is built on Kubernetes. So we're delivering Kubernetes as a service, as a multi-cloud service. And because it's Kubernetes, it makes container management first nature. So let's deploy a container. Now you can deploy containers in a number of different ways. You can download directly from a Docker repo or you could use YAML, or you could use our application charts. So we say we wanted to enable those developers, right? So let's go ahead and deploy a Jenkins build server. Now here's our template. You can customize it or go with the defaults. We're going to go with defaults and launch it. And just like that, 
we launch a Jenkins build server. So all of these orchestrations you can, of course, do yourself. But with the orchestration framework, you can now securely delegate these particular functions directly down to the application developers or cloud architects in a very, very secure and structured way. Yeah, I mean, it was really easy for the DevOps team to go ahead and just deploy Jenkins. And now the developers, well, they can just use it, start getting to work, and building out those applications. Now, the tricky thing about designing applications for the cloud is designing for scale. Right? You don't know what you need for resources in advance. What's the demand going to be? Is that demand going to change over time? Right? Now, wouldn't it be nice if applications could just grow and shrink on demand? Wouldn't that be nice? Well, they can when we use auto-scaling. So I'm going to show that to you. So here you can set the minimum and maximum number of instances of your application. So I'm going to change some of these values here. I'm go to 12 minimum, 200 maximum. And there's a CPU threshold for 75%. And what that means is when the aggregate load of the application hits 75%, well, it's going to automatically grow it and grow another one and grow another one and shrink accordingly as well. So when I hit the auto scale button, you're going to see that we're going to instantly, you know, you don't have to read everything on the screen, but you can see there's three instances running now. When I turn on auto scaling, it's going to automatically scale up to 12, and that's what you're going to see. And here we go, automatically scaling up. So with auto scaling, it makes dealing with change in dynamic environments simple. All right, so we showed you a lot of GUI here today, but I know you guys don't care about GUIs, do you? You care about automation. So we have a restful set of APIs for all the operations that Cloud Orchestrator can perform. Now, NetApp Cloud Orchestrator, you can manage applications and data together. You can deploy DevOps infrastructure. You can develop with agile workflows and automation using our APIs. You can run microservice architectures, and you can meter cloud resources, and you can do it all in a uniform way across Azure, Amazon, and Google. Now, the thing I'm excited about here is, look, anybody can spin up compute. Right? But NetApp is the only one bringing multi-cloud compute and data management together into a single cloud orchestration platform. So let's go back to our checklist here. I think we accomplished our mission, right? We did everything Eric wanted to do today. And now Eric has the tools that he needs to enable his DevOps team, his developers, and his data scientists to harness the power of hybrid cloud. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. So, you know, we at NetApp, we're all in. We love the cloud. We think the cloud is a wonderful opportunity for a company like NetApp to continue to differentiate itself. We want to support and enable our customers to take advantage of the digital transformation through cloud economics. We want to make sure that it's easy for you to migrate existing workloads to the clouds. We want to make sure that scenarios for DevOps and analytics are as simple as they possibly can be. We want to make sure that that saved capital that you may use from the cloud gets put back into innovation with data in your business. And I hope you've seen today that we want to enable the application developers, line of business, and data scientists to achieve meaningful outcomes with your help and support. All of this we're doing through our data fabric, through a company-wide policy-based framework that allows you to take advantage of the richness of ONTAP in your on-premises, and now the richness of ONTAP directly inside Microsoft Azure. Thank you all very much. All right, thank you, Anthony and Joe. So there you have it. 
three different but interconnected approaches to taking advantage of the exciting options in IT today. James optimized his operations with a modern data center. Stephanie stands up a new business with a next generation data center. And Eric has accelerated Capital X's business by embracing the cloud and the opportunity it presents. The new NetApp is leaning into those great opportunities, helping put data at the heart of the business. And the best parts of the old NetApp are still alive, still simplifying complexity, so that you can change the world with data. But wait, there's one more thing. Ladies and gentlemen, Nito from Brazil. <laughs> Hello, guys. NetApp! I love this company! Ready? Sipak! Sipak! Thank you so much. <laughs> if you guys want to learn more about what you just learned today, please follow me to Insight Central. Let's go. Don't jump. Thanks so much. Don't jump. <laughs> <laughs>